everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa. And this is a very exciting day because I'm going to show you how you can paint this forest scene in acrylic paint step by step. I'm going to break down every technique, every color mix, every tool I use so that you can paint along with me at home. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to make sure that you see everything that I'm demonstrating and talking about by pointing our cameras directly into the action which really gives you guys a deep zoomed in camera eye view of what's going on and will help you see what's happening to understand how a technique is executed. Um, we're going to be on Facebook and YouTube today. At the end of the show, stay tuned because we're going to announce our giveaway winners from the bird hop at the end of the show. Oh, yeah. And at the beginning... No, before we go on that, uh, I got to tell you, there's some friends that are in some countries far away. Yeah. That should stay up, especially yeah. if your name's Raheel. Yeah. You should stay up till the end. I'm just saying. Set an alarm, I don't know. Because, you know, it's late where you might be. It's worth right. you staying up. Just saying. So the other thing that we're doing today, uh, uh, and you can see this over on Facebook, we are um, trying to replace our uh, bubble machine with a disco ball. So we rebuilt the studio where I stand and paint at the easel completely again another time. And when we put the bubble machine in for the test, there's entirely too much artwork in the path of that bubble machine. It just okay. isn't going to work. Yep. So to get the rain lamp in and get the artwork up that I wanted, I had to come up with a... Actually, I didn't come up with a different solution. John came up with a different solution. He was like, what if we put some laser lights on a disco ball? And then when we would hit 300 people or something exciting would happen we could turn the disco ball. And I was like, well, that's a good idea. So now we're going to get a disco ball. So if you're on uh, Facebook and you'd like to uh, generously support us with stars, we have a goal set up there. I think it's like, it's just 10,000 stars today. <clears throat> and um, we'll get a disco ball. This is a really direct thing. If we if we get it up, we're going to get a disco ball. Disco with, ball. With it. And lights. And so if you're and a spinner. all excited about that, that's what's happening there. I'm a little excited. John is very excited. He really, really wants a disco ball in his life in a way I can't uh, even explain. You know, I can I cannot get Trying over the get loss of the, the Bee Gees in my life. There could be, n there's not enough disco, I could all say. Right. I'm pinning my video so that people can find it easier. Um, so this is going to be a full three hoot. And what that means for you at home, if you have not painted before, is that you are a beginner, but you want to be a somewhat confident beginner. You need to have a core set of skills that you feel um, that you kind of understand, like dry brushing or stippling or working wet into wet. And if all those terms seem completely unfamiliar to you, I would say stay and watch because you'll be surprised at how easy these concepts are. And definitely do some of our one hoot lessons, which will get you caught up in no time. And I it generally find it takes about 10 or 20 one hoots and people are ready for all the two and three hoots that they feel like doing. Mm -hmm. So um, not always. We're all individuals and there's no right way or wrong way in the journey of getting together. I'm starting out with a 9 by 12 surface today. We want to divide that in half, both vertically and horizontally. I used to do that a watercolor pencil because I want it to go away when I paint. If you were to use a Prismacolor pencil or regular colored pencil, it would bleed through. You wouldn't want to use a Sharpie, it would bleed through, or a regular pencil because it could bleed through. And it's a very light line. It's just to help me know where objects are on the surface. I am going to freehand in, but you guys have both an explanation on how to do a grid and the grid is provided for you, or to do a traceable and the traceable is provided for you. Either one of those solutions is also okay. I'm just going to be demonstrating the free handing in today for you guys who are like, I'm ready for it. In the Don't paint worry. colors, huh? Step one. No, no, not yet. We haven't covered paint colors. Okay. Sorry. I pre-stepped. That's he, right. He prematurely stepped. I'm, I'm, I'm fast stepper. He's a fast stepper. All right. Ultramarine blue, <laughs> Mars black, bird sienna, phthalo green, cad red medium, cad yellow medium, docks purple, a little phthalo blue just in case I need it here and there for pops of color and titanium white. The phthalo blue is kind of a little bit optional. I just find in paintings where there's a strong orange story, which this one has, it's a fall forest, it's a strong orange story. It's nice to have a little phthalo turquoise to pop in there because turquoise and orange, they're like Mwah! together. So it's nice to have a little bit of that around. Now, sir, you may step away. Ah, I am not a high stepper, nor a lyrical gangster, but I am a fast stepper. Are you going to be like that reporter that keeps, like, <laughs> saying rap I, I lyrics? Think it's, uh, yeah, he's on uh, the CNN dude. He's awesome. He says rap li lyrics. He doesn't, he doesn't rap. He just Maury, says them, and, like, with gravitas. Oh, like, yes. 
like it's very relatable to current events. <laughs> Which it is. No matter how you feel about any particular network, there are funny moments in every life. Mm-hmm. And anytime anything silly happens to a reporter, that's always good. Like if a we bear is like, I kiss your face now on the reporter, I'm always happy. I'm not mad at reporters. I just have always liked that. <laughs> Because it's the kind of job that stuff should happen. I'm going to take my burnt sienna, and I'm just very lightly kind of come here. So this the canvas is divided at the four and a half inch mark and the six inch mark, and so we have this center point here, right, in the center of the canvas, both uh, horizontally and vertically. I'm going to come down to this far right side. No, oh gosh, about two and a half inches from the bottom or so. I'm going to bring up a little bit of a line. And really, honestly, guys, the first line, the first little marking in this canvas is very mellow. I cannot express to you how mellow it is. Mm -hmm. And the reason that it's as mellow as it is is because there's just a gentle slope, and then we have the background forest, and you've got kind of a path afoot here. Right? We have this little path. Well, actually, the path is even more. Let's path even more off this way. Ah. It's a little bit above the, it's a very, I go somewhere, but you don't come with me kind of path. <laughs> right? And we know we have a little tree coming up the side, and I'm just going to give myself just enough of a mark to remember it. And here's why, because I don't want to do the best sky I ever had off this edge. Right? Mm. I don't, sometimes it's good to know where uh, some objects are going to be, like if you think there's a big tree here and a big tree here and a big tree here. These are not the places to do the best background trees of your life. You could. Isn't this a really great freehand <laughs> painting? <laughs> Landscapes are actually pretty easy to block in. You just need to know about the relationship of where stuff is. Like, you know, if this is four and a half inches from the top, right, it's, it's just a little bit below that halfway point, right? You know, and so you can kind of relationally see where the line goes and then get a better result sketching in. Let's photograph this and put up step two. I know, it's that easy. It was. It's that easy. Shameful how easy that was. Okay, what? Make sure I got my thing going here. Where it, I thought I did it and thought I pinned it and then it's, oh, there it is. All right, I'm going to go into my lab there so I can see. I want to thank everybody who is supporting us in our star goal today. Um, I really, really appreciate that. Uh, it's actually uh, both YouTube and Facebook when you guys do Super Chat or you do stars. If you choose to, you don't need to. A share works, a comment works, a like works. These things help all creators, not just us. Um, but they are very honest about it, and they have, like, really good practices. Um, there have been platforms I wasn't as sure of, but those two have been pretty good so far, and I'll let you know the minute that they're not. <laughs> you know me, I'll out them. I will out them, like, totally. I see uh, Adriana is in Facebook today, and Tammy Edwardson is saying hi. And... We are back. How are we doing? All right. This part of the surface. This is one of the first things as a beginner you might not know. So really getting this will help all of your landscapes. Understanding that distant objects are kind of grayed out or lighter than you think are far away is profoundly helpful to you. I'm going to use a oval mop. This is an oval mop. I have other oval mops, like I've got a Royal and Lang Nickel, and I've got some Princeton oval mops here. Um, the big thing I would say is, is I like synthetic brushes because it's a little easier to control the water on them. That's all it is. You know, and the bigger the mop is, the more water it holds. So middle size to small, don't get the big, big mop. Get kind of a middle to small mop. I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'm going to get my brush just a little bit wet, and I'm going to really load a little bit of my uh, white on here. And I may even put in my gloss glazing liquid. Gloss glazing liquid slows down the drying time of the paint uh, up to 45 minutes, depending like on the magic. mixture. And so it can be a really friendly, wonderful thing to help you hold an area where you want to be working some wet into wet and you don't want it to dry out on you. I'm just getting rid of a hair that found its way on there. I dropped my brushes earlier today, and they got hairs from the floor. Huh. So not all glazing liquid is this. This is Golden Artist Colors Gloss Glazing Liquid, um, and it's a slow-drying extender for acrylic colors. 
You want to look for the one that's slow drying, not just a transparent glazing agent because they mm. behave very differently. You could also just use water. I'm going to use this, but you can use water at home. If you don't have that, don't, don't freak out. Just use water at home. It'll be okay for a minute. My studio, I need a little extra help because it's, have you all noticed that there's some heat waves going on mm -hmm. a few places? And uh, my studio is no exception. It's got some heat wave going on. And so I'm really paying for it. Now, it's, we're not heat waving like it used to be heat waving. Oh, like in Texas? Yeah. No, but it's still pretty good. I'm taking a it little of my good. ultramarine yes. blue and I'm working. I'm talking over John only because I got to work quickly through fast. here. Wet, wet. I got to go fast, fast. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to dust in just the smallest amount of blue, guys. It is blue, but it's, man, it's a kiss of it. Oh, I can the see. The kiss of blue. Just a little. Just a little. It's not quite purely. Oh, that's a lot in my brush. So I'm going to work that out. It's just a kiss of blue. Right? And as I come down, it'll get bluer. I am using my brush strokes. You'll see I'm kind of multidirectional. What am I doing? I am blending this as we go down. Now, as I go down, I might even get smidge. Just, oh, just a smidge. The thing about phthalo is it's just so staining, isn't it? And I might even get a little of my burnt sienna in here. What am I doing? I'm graying the color. Still blue, but it's grayed out. I'm going to need to get a little water in it because it's already drying on me. I know, it's that kind of a day, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to come up the side of the hill with a little bit of this grayed color. And I'm just blending. Blending works in acrylic, working wet into wet. If you're having blending trouble, do take a minute and watch my uh, video on how to blend acrylics like oils. Uh, I give you guys literally six easy ways <laughs> to title the video because it was six easy ways to do it. Uh -huh. I'm going to make a follow-up soon with some more easy ways. Mm. But you can see here that by working wet into wet and using a soft pressure and a very careful blend, I can get a very nice transition where there's a little more depth coming down get a little more brown into this and gray this even a little more i know this is for wet. our branches i know you're doing wet into wet so i've got a question when you're ready okay let me get through the wet into wet and then we'll get to some questions All now right. this next bit is an interesting bit i'm gonna come take a little yellow oh gosh just a little bit and i mean and a little red into my yellow small amount small amount small amount oh well, the good news is I wanted to go into green. What happened there is my brush got into my blue. That's okay. I was going to go over here and get just a smidge of this. So that worked because yellow and blue make green. And I'm going to make sure that I get a little yellow going here. This is a very light. I can't tell you how light you want it to be. So light. I don't even mind if it gets into this blue here. It goes mildly green. Working as fast as I can so the paint is still wet. Doing little curl strokes. I don't want to come back too far from this point right here because it's not that thick. We start getting into those open branches. And so I'm going to come into that middle mix where it's sort of like a little blue and a little white and make sure that that's a gentle sloping transition. See how we're doing? Mm -hmm. Even down here, if I'm going to put some distant little bits of that in the blue, I need it to be gentle and not a lot. The strokes kind of have a curve to them. I use the fluff of my brush. It's a bit of work to do this, guys, but once you get this technique down, it's a whole different ballpark in your landscape painting. You'll just be much happier in it in general. All right, so see, we've got those nice little transitional colors and things happening. All right, to John, what is your question, sir? Okay. How many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? How many tickles does it take, John, to make an octopus laugh? Ten tickles. <laughs> okay, so seriously. Uh, Stay to the go? end if you want to know who won the prince from the bird hop. Is a gloss glazing liquid the same as slow dry medium? Similar. They're similar. Slow dry medium is a little more temperamental. The reason I recommend that brand is it's very forgiving to the student. If you make a mix, mistake in the mix ratios, it's not going to hurt you. Um, some slow, slow drying blending mediums uh, will punish you. You've really got to read the product information. If it says extender, you're generally okay. Um, if it gives you ratios, listen to the ratios. 
The ratios are for real. Hmm. And it'll tell you. They don't mess with you. Just really always read your jars. Like, look at how much information is here. In other languages, even. They want you to know all kinds of things. I always turn over any product, and then if I can go to the manufacturer's website and read that page, whatever they have about the product, sometimes they'll have projects, they'll tell you interesting things, uh, ideas, experiments. Just take that extra time. Even if you're a beginner, super worth it. Gives you incredible results. All right. Ready for your next step? Uh, I'm ready for my next step, and we'll get a photograph. Maybe heat on my coffee, because... It's, how is it hot in here and my coffee's cold? I don't understand how those two things are also true together ever in any kind of a way. It's very strange. Um, for everyone who's helping support us on our disco ball drive, thank you so much. I appreciate that deeply. Um, we'll try to get that in and have the uh, standing easel. That's when we do the 16 by 20 canvases. I have to be the standing easel. And we took that studio apart and are rebuilding it right now. And we're replacing the bubble machine with a disco ball. Because I have all this artwork. I did a wall of art. If you're in my patronage, you saw the wall of art. Um, but that's a lot of art to sacrifice to the disco bubbles. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a lot. All right. So we've got these little background trees. They're awesome. They're fantastic. And I'm going to use round brushes to paint them. I've got a couple different round brushes here, all of which are great tree painters. This is a number two Raphael Precision. And this is a number four, the Art Sherpa Round. Um, these are both great brushes. This is a little more like a rigger, which is a very long brush. Um, and this is more like a traditional round. You can find the Art Sherpa on the Michaels website and get it at 40% off. You can find generally all the brushes on thebrushguys.com. Be sure you spell that correctly. Otherwise, you go to a website you don't want to go. Um, just an unfortunate Google problem, isn't it? <laughs> so just spell correctly, thebrushguys.com. And if you use the, uh, the Art Sherpa on checkout, you can get a discount. All right. On the brush guys, not Michael's. Michael's has their own coupons. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint some distant trees. And I'm going to show you some of the far away ones with my long brush. The long brush. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to get into my brown. <clears throat> I'm going to get into my brown. And I'm going to make a background color that's very close to what's going on in the sky. And we're going to come like inside here in this zone. And make some distant little branch events. Not nice. There's a lot that's happening here. Very important to be aware of that. This again is the precision, uh, I don't know, number two Matre imitation sable. So no actual sables were murdered <laughs> in the making of this brush, which is nice, honestly. The killing of sables is not ideal, right? So I'm just using my ultramarine blue. And my burnt sienna and a little white to make a gray. And these are the distant. Trees in the background. Mm. Making lots of little close together trunks. It just takes a minute. Sometimes you can uh, come in on one side, maybe a little highlight on that trunk. Doesn't have to be only one color, right? Right. Because sometimes uh, maybe a little light got there. We have a lot to put in. There's quite a lot going off into the distance. Mm -hmm. That's happening. Now coming up here, it's going to open up. It's going to get lighter. So we don't want to take our lines to the top. We want to leave kind of an opening up here. So yes, we have some distant little trees we're painting. The 
Sometimes I want to get into some light trees. Mm -hmm. So these are little lines sort of coming up, building that background forest up. Build it up, guys. Build it up. A little darker than I want, so I'm going to come in with a little more light. These are little far off branches. They're fine, and they're and they're not defined. Mm. Sometimes it's important to know that when we're, you know, working a background, we've got a lot of. Oh, darn it. I just put a bunch of trees where I knew I was sticking another big tree. <laughs> big tree. Right. I'm like, ah, no point in putting big work into the big tree. And these are far off trunks, right? They're in the mist. They're, they're far away and they're in the mist. A lot of leaves are going to come here. We just have to get some far off in the mist going on the beginnings. We'll be coming back. There's about three layers to this background space at least. Mm -hmm. You know, and we want to get the layering of that together. A little white. Wander your trunks. They're not straight orderly lines, are they? Mm. They bend and they go forward. Let's call that a step and we'll come back and put a little layer of leaves and then we'll bring some forward and then another little layer of leaves. We won't have to do it so detailed all the way through, but this will help us understand the construct of how this world is built. And more disco, huh? You have so much disco ball Thank you for the disco ball support. Thank you for supporting the disco ball. It's silly, I know. So uh, in our regular show, we used to have a bubble machine. And whenever we got to 300 people on a live stream, we'd be like, we're Sherpa. And we would hit the bubble machine or something exciting happened or we're celebrating something for somebody. The bubble machine will go. In the new studio, there's too much artwork in the path of the bubble machine. Um, and you'll see what I mean on when we do the hydrangeas because that's the first 16 by 20 we're doing again in a while. And so we thought, oh, what can we do instead? And I was like, man, I want something. And John's like, disco balls. So now we're going to. Right, disco. Through Super Chat and stars in, you know, we're going to get a disco ball. That's exactly where your stars are going or your stickers are going is disco ball. Mm -hmm. At the end, we're announcing the beginners, the winners. <laughs> Not the beginners, the winners. So I'm going to take two cheap brushes. These are such cheap brushes. They're so cheap they shed. Be sure to wash your cheap hog brushes thoroughly before painting with them or you'll have hog bristles all over everything. These are art mines. Um, for Michael's, they were cheap. They're also really great rough brushes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my artist knife and I'm come here. And I'm going to mix just the smallest amount of red into this. I'm going to make a very kind of light orange. And then I'm going to get a little green over here. See how light that green is? That's a very mm -hmm. light green. And I've got yellow and orange and other colors near it, so I can get into other colors easily. I'm going to take my big sort of hog. You can see the load on it. I'm going to begin to... Give ourselves some distant little trees. They're distant. Distant. They're distant. They're not uh, staying in touch or anything. You can uh, add brown to it if you ever want to at some point to kind of like change its tone or nature. Be very light here. I don't want to go too far into that. I'm going to get a little brown very carefully with this brush and a little green very carefully with this brush. And you can see I'm swirling it in mm -hmm. my dark value. 
Just make sure that some of the little trees back here have a dark value. I need to get some more of my Now we know that we're going to be in the background there so we can be kind of mellow about it. I'm going to get to a smaller brush. Um, I'm going to move down. This came in a pack so it lets me size easily down. Did you use a palette knife? I did use an artist knife. Why'd you do that? Because it let me not get any blue in my mix. <laughs> oh. Just gave me a little more control, which I really needed. Everyone was like, why'd you do that? I am going to take a little, that was a good question. I'm going to take a little bit of my red and get kind of an orange mixture here. And we don't want to, to fill it all up. We want light to show through. We could do this with a good hog brush, a very expensive hog brush. We can just use the hog brush we've got on hand. These are all fine. And there'll be more branches coming forward. We've got a couple more trees to kind of work going forward. This is just the beginning. And just moving on one of those little broken bristles away. I don't want to be dealing with it. Mm -hmm. So pretty. And then a little bit of green over here. Why not blend in a little bit of orange, right? It's fall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why not? Nature did. Why not you? Maybe a little white into this mix for some lighter ones. See how much lighter that is? Yeah. Pretty shocking and exciting. Shocking. Shocking and exciting. Let's be exciting in our forest. Let's paint a forest that we want to walk into. I would, I would go it's in this forest. It's inviting and it's saying, hey, come on, man. Yeah, I got the reference. Okay. Suzanne would like to know if it's okay she paints some of the tutorial. Okay. <laughs> Is it, she has a bunch of friends who are like, hey, can I buy that painting from you? That's the fine. So uh, use policy is, and you can always write us and get specific things. If you're just selling a painting to your friend, that's completely cool. If you're selling online or at a craft show or at an art event or your church fair, it's nice that you give attribution, which means somewhere like a card is tucked in there from the original design of the art trip or something. Um, it doesn't need to be like written or branded on the painting. Uh, you know, in your public listing, you should say where it comes from. Um, we ask that you guys don't do prints or mechanical reproductions. The exception is like over the holidays, we let you guys make personal Christmas cards and stuff like that. Like when you're doing personal stuff like that. So if ever you have a question, you can write us. We're definitely a group that's better to ask permission than forgiveness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, just for us personally, it's better. I'm going to get some more green in here. Now that's looking pretty good, right? Some distant things are afoot. I'm weirdly going to go ahead and get a little of my blue. And white going again and brown. There's some things happening there so far back here that they're almost themselves in a shadow. They really are. It's just, I like how the, it just emerges like we have talked about it before, like a developing photograph. Yeah, it's just going to pull together. These are distant little bushes that are off far, far away. And then we can come back in and, you know, even think about refining any of this, right? I like to get a little water on the brush, one to two drops over here, make it a nice gray. Mm 
Now we all have a tree in our hearts. Mm. Again, just using this longer brush. Sometimes a longer brush is what you need to get good branches out of yourself. That's all you needed. You didn't know it, but that's what that's all that was required. Do a little half grip here and you know. Make some branches that look like they're in sunlight. We can do that. Oh, yeah. Take a little time to be relaxed into it. It is definitely the fun. Mm. Okay, so if you think this is the midway point, coming right about here. Yeah. We have the beginnings of some trees that are maybe a little more defined. So I'm just giving ourselves some trunks and things that might speak to that a little bit. So we had the far away ones. These ones are perhaps a little closer. You know, and we're going to give them interesting little trunks and things. And also come up and add some little branches up into the canopy. They might be painted over, but sometimes I find it's just nice to have a little hmm. sort of like structural branch in the canopy. Invariably, I always stick a tree I'm going to paint over in a minute. This is not gouache, is it? This is not gouache. There are similar techniques between acrylic and gouache. And if you like this, you can uh, really make some of these work for you. You may be choosing gouache because it's an environmentally sound product, and that's reasonable. You know, we all have reasons why we choose particular products in our life. Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to get a bunch of white on my brush. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add some highlights again to some of my darker trees. Now are you using the toe of the brush there? I am using the toe of the brush. My pressure is light. I am using the toe of the brush to create the drama that you're seeing. Adding some highlights in the in the distance to show those. Come back and if I lose anybody too much, man, I can come right back, right? I'll paint anybody back that I want to. Mm. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now we're going to get back into this brush. A little green, a little brown again, right? They work well together. Make sure the brush is pretty wet. Always a good idea to layer things up. Mm -hmm. It gives the world a sense of having space and depth. The things to avoid are making too many um, distinctive patterns. You wouldn't have distinctive patterns. That's just...
not what would be going on. I do like to give some green to even some of these orange because if you remember at some point, they were green. I want more thought out bush there. I'm going to get a little more yellow green. Yeah. And then if I want to get into some red and yellow, I haven't rinsed my brush. So yes, it's orange, but it's not like a bright orange. Mm. Maybe a little kiss here and there. Could could we use your cloud brush instead of that? Um, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not to be that person. This is just different brush. Just a different brush. The cloud brush is a scumbler. I have one here and I'll show you what I mean. So the cloud brush, if you loosen it up, right, it's still not going to be that open. Mm -hmm. I can get here. See, it's just not going to give me yeah. that stroke, right? I would have to be doing like this. It just isn't going to give me that open stroke. See if I can blend that back in. So that's why the cloud brush is a very good dome scumbler and it paints um, heavily uh, weighted paint in thick impasto uh, technique quite well. I have a video on that on how to do a fall forest mm -hmm. with very thick paint. And it absolutely has that going on. I'm going to paint that away now. <laughs> All right. We're going to call that a step and say that we're getting uh, someplace rather lovely. I think it's quite lovely. Quite lovely. we got to get some ground for the rest of these up-close trees to kind of start growing out of. And that doesn't mean that we're not going to put some more color up in the distance or work some things. Um, if you don't have my brush and you want to get that same technique, another technique, you could use a sea sponge. A little craft sea sponge will do this. You can get a pretty good similar technique out of crumpled up saran wrap. Um, any hog brush, any just sort of hot mess brush, brush that your cat or dog chewed up often is very good for this technique. Any brush that you generally feel is probably ruined isn't as ruined as you think. It's probably just a really good cloud brush now. So in this next part, I've got this sort of embankment that everything is growing on in the trail. And to really put any of my trees into it, I need to build an embankment right, that the trees can come up out of bushes and be growing in and out of. Um, and so that's going to be really, really important. So let's begin that. I'm going to use my number eight cat's tongue just to give me a nice big wide brush that I can paint a lot with. I'm going to make this real easy on myself. I'm just going to take a little bit of my black and brown together. I'm going to turn this aside and I'm going to just at first kind of just work all this in that kind of color space at first. We're just wanting to get a nice big coat of black brown on here. And I'm just turning my canvas to the side here so that I have an easy access to it. Right. I can always come in and get a little of my orange to be like, no, you're a path and you go here. Just so I can remember where it is. Doesn't need to be particularly neat at this stage, guys. We're going to be doing a lot of like rough leafing here. So I can, if I want to, kind of use brush stroke to imply directionality of help. Yeah. If I want to. Don't have to. The other thing to remember is that a lot of this is actually covered with trees or leaves or some type of object. Yep. So it's not important that at this stage 
you get it perfect. Is that ultramarine blue with bright sienna for the tree trunks? Um, if for some of the tree trunks, yes. Okay. So uh, there's thalo here for pop of color where we need it and to kind of tone ultramarine. But the ultramarine and the burned sienna often do tree trunks. I'm going to mix kind of a mid-grade and come here and I'm going to just very lightly come to the edge of my brush and I'm going to make this a very soft diffused hill space. You guys see how I'm diffusing the hill? Mm -hmm. It's there. We'll be getting into it some, but that's just kind of going on right here. Yeah. All right. That looks pretty, pretty good. Um, we can call that a step so that I can show you how we take it from here to building it into a leaf strewn embankment with bushes and then eventually trees. Because we're going to have to add some more trees that are thin trees in that gray space coming forward a little stronger before we get to our big focal trees. It's just really important that we layer things in so that the, the painting feels like it has depth that you can fall into. And oftentimes depth that you can fall into is just the layers. All right. So same brush. Remember, if you don't have this brush, get a sea sponge, get your kitchen sponge. Just don't use it again in the kitchen. Uh, <laughs> You know, anything that gives you this rough texture is what we're going to be going for. I'm going to be coming here and getting a little of my red into this mix. And you can see it picked up a little blue and white, so it lightened a bit. I can even add a little yellow. Mm -hmm. I'm making little short, rough strokes. Pressure is light. A lot of the canvas is showing through. Sometimes I will take them a little bit of a different direction. little brown and red and black we're going to just kind of bring it a little bit maybe deeper as it comes forward there's actually believe it or not a lot of color in the hill we're getting going to get into don't take out your dark because it's your friend my leaves will help shape the hill It's easy to get messy and not thoughtful with these strokes, and you really don't want to fall into that habit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get into a little of my dot ox purple and my cad red. And kind of bring some of that in there, some deep color. Definitely perhaps right here. I come into a smaller brush real soon with that one. A little shadow at the base of the hill. And I'm just trying to make sure that my hill, right, has diffused in its color, right? We don't want something that's, you know, clearly one color or stripe in there. You don't want polka dots. You don't want any of that going on. I'm going to get my little brush here and I'll grab my red and yellow again. I need to get into my green, I will. Sometimes it's messy and I don't mind. Maybe the beginnings of some sort of bush mm. structure that's there, right? Definitely diffusing those edges. I can come into my gray. 
get a little blue into it. What I'm doing is I'm just trying to make sure that the hillside here, when we add our big focus trees, I don't want this to have a clear beginning and end. A little light color here. More wash out. A little bit of my purple and red. And up here, kind of down through this embankment, I'm going to have my little purple and cad red. So my dog's purple and my cad red. Any little rough brush. You could do round brush. You can do square brush. I'm just using my roughest, weirdest brush. It's kind of a dry brushish. Technique. It's very dry brush. My brush is not wet. I don't use a lot of water in my hog brush because the hog carries too much water. I always have a towel, a towel, and I'm always wiping my brush out between rinses. Oh, oh there, there may be something we got to do, Cinnamon. Did we, did we get to our stars? Well, I see that there are enough people in the room. That we... <gasps> to do the disco ball? Are we Sherpa? I think... 296, 297, oh, 298. No, it's got to be 300. Is, is 297. Oh, somebody left. They didn't want to help us. They're like, no, we're out of here. Not no. doing that disco stuff. All right. I'll let you know. We're hovering. If, if we hit 300, we go Sherpa. Oh, Can't do that. Not yet. I got to get the other, the other screen. Can't have gotta that be. Screen. You got to be. We're almost there. I'm putting in some dark here in the distance. I just want some nice shadow. That's my purple and cat, right? I'm going to come here at the base of the hill. And I like really give myself some. Maybe a little orange there. Notice I'm not rinsing out my brush. I'm okay. <laughs> Light color. Two ninety nine. Continue to vary in those colors because you want to give yourself little leaf highlights. Look at these little leaf highlights coming in. And you do. You do pay attention to the way the dappled light is on your hill, right? You don't want to lose that. So like out here, and I want to get a mix of it, but I don't want it to have bright pops of yellow. So out here, I'm going to add some dappled light. Some dappled light coming down the hill. It's not bright, it's just, it's just there. It's that distant lighting. A little more yellow into it. Quite a lot right here. Maybe even some red into it, it's just quite a lot. I may even get into a brighter orange at this stage, but we're going to start putting in the thought of it. Edge of the hill. Huh? 301. Three. All right. So now you must put the brush down. I will put the brush down. And disco. Little tiny disco. Big disco. See, soon we're going to be able to do more than just virtually disco. We're going to be able to, Thank like, you very much, guys, for throw down the with the DMX lights. I <laughs> so appreciate the support. You guys have no idea how much I appreciate the support. I do deeply appreciate the whoop, support. Whoop. Not that button. This button. And that button. And now that button. <laughs> and this button. And we're back to buttoning. But I'll sneak some disco in. 
when you can, right? I'm going to get a little of my orange, my brighter orange. And I'm going to work some of my red brown into it. I don't want my fully brightest orange, but I do need some of the brighter colors to kind of maybe be kissing places here and there. Kissing colors, you know. A little bright in there in the red. Sometimes I'll get into the brown back here. Now, this, the path has a lot. I'm going to get a lot more yellow into it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come like this in the path. I'm going to sweep my brush back and forth, kind of making that. Kind of shaping the path with my brush stroke, right? And then if I get a little white into it, that same path color. And we can also like maybe speak to a little bit of light that comes across our path. Sometimes your path has a little dappled light that might come down from the trees. A little more brown there. So just beginning to dapple that path with something. A little brown. I'll get over into the purple again. Over there, I definitely want to have it darker. Mm -hmm. A little red into the docks. There we go. So we're starting to see like how the how it all comes together. Mm -hmm. I can get my ultramarine into it, and it just automatically grays, which is great. There's something here in the distance, and we'll we'll see it in a minute. That's kind of got this little gray face, and I want to work oh, it yeah. in there. And I like this gray very much. It it really works because it's got a blue cast to it in relationship to the hill. I feel like we got a lot of hill work done. A lot of hill work is built up. You know, we can see the basis of where our leaves are going to go. And now we can kind of get in there and detail them as we are. It's a great time to change water, my friends. Great time to change water. And great time to heat the last gulp of my coffee. And I think I want to dry. I want to dry. Okay, you can dry. Okay. So, thank you guys for all the disco support. We really appreciate all the stars and super chat and emoji club. Really helps. Um, you know, we've got... Uh, it's it's really wonderful to have all of you here. To be Sherpa, to have 300 people in the room, and to be able to disco. Yay! Disco time! So, you know... I'm all about that stuff. So thank you guys for coming and hanging out. Thank you for being part of our community. Um, thank you for supporting all of the wonderful things that we do. Okay. I missed my paint, so it's not drying missed. out. So I want to add a little water to the paint, but I don't want to soak it because I don't want to change hot mixes, and that's a nice mystery. Yeah, step it. Step it up. Step it up. All right. Oh my gosh, guys, this is going to be so gorgeous when it's done. We're going to really get deep into it. We're really going to go into the bark of the tree. We're really going to build these trees. Um, we're going to landscape it up. I've been wanting to do this on my channel and on the Facebook page for a while. This more sort of deep in landscaping. Um, we've got some very light stuff coming up. The hydrangea coming up fully one hoot. Gorgeous painting, one hoot. We're going to be less than an hour in that class. In these deep dives, though, I really like getting into how we build it and how we get a gorgeous landscape that we feel good about without having to, like, break the bank. So for the next part, I'm, I am going to start with my um, cat's tongue just because I want to have it. And I'm going to actually use my black. I know, this is shocking. 
The reason I'm using my black and it doesn't bother me that some blue got into it is that I want to see where my um, trees go and I can then sort of come here and think about the bend of the trees. And I'll start by giving them perhaps a little bit of a little sketch in. This is not their full scale. I just want to know sort of what areas they're going to be taking up space. Right, like I know this one has a little branch that's going to come up next to him and up and back a little bit, not too much. Another little fellow there. It's a big one. And then there's a very big tree. Come up a little bit. That's right here. I'm very excited about this big tree. It has the big branch. It comes off here. Everything on this, this tree has big branches, big roots, big gnarls, big everything. So it'll be super interesting painting all of the big coming off of this tree. So again, I'm just loosely sketching. That way I have a sense of, oh, well, this tree is going to take up this much space. And before I get into the details of them, it just lets me know where they are. While I'm here, I'm going to go into my brown and ultramarine as I do. And I'm going to do a little fence post. Maybe a little more white into that. So we have just a little bit of a fence in the distance. A little bit of a gray fence in the distance. We're going to add highlights to it to shape it, but this is what it's going to start out as. So we know where that is, right? Nice scale to that. And that gives us good scale to what we have going on here. I'm going to then go ahead and in black start to rough in my trees. Let's begin here. I won't do the roots or the details with my big brush. I'm going to get just the, like, the broad strokes, as they say. And then what I will do is I will detail in things, because I've got lighting to paint on here. I've got bark texture to paint on here. There's stuff to paint on here. So, and there's many, many leaves to put on here. There's so much work to do. But I'll take over the big section of it. With my big brush. Like this one has a lot happening in it. I will definitely get my little rigger out in a little bit. My almost rigger, my long brush. And this one has a pretty big trunk coming up. So I've got to kind of really get that big trunk coming up. It has some really weird shaping to it where branches had grown and it had thickened up in unexpected ways. So this, this tree has thickened up in unexpected ways. I definitely want to speak to that.
And that's looking pretty good, isn't it? So we're getting those big trees in and we're putting in that deep base so we can add highlights and light glittering on the trunk and texture. You know, we'll definitely get into the tree, uh, the root system. This one has such a, such a completely big, weird, awesome system coming off of here. And I don't often paint the trees with these weird kind of offshoot systems. But today, we do. Today, we say, you are a weird tree in the forest that we have found. And you shall be painted as you are, strange creature. These two are separate branches, but we're going to separate them by light. And this one has a little branch kind of coming up. You don't have to have everything up here as dark as possible. Like it doesn't have to be perfectly covered because there's so many layers of trunk coming on. Now, I'm going to add two drops of water. And I'm going to thin that water into my black paint so I can have just a little bit of flow here. Because I've got to start thinking about how these roots are. These roots are wild, right? I'm learning a lot about roots. So much happening in the roots. And then this one has some roots coming down like this. And then it's got a little root coming off over here. So there's a lot of roots on that tree that we're going to be painting. And even though this one is maybe not as rooty, it has some roots. This one has a weird little black bush over here that we'll have to get into. Also, work my, we got some root here, and some root coming down the hill. All right, while we're here, let's just pick up our fence, because we've got the color out anyways. I'm going to make a much lighter version of it. Adding some highlights to that distant fence. Yeah. Now, if you're interested in joining our patronage, where do you go? To our website, theartsherpa.com. And there's a tab in there for patrons. And you just sign up and you can catch up on all the past classes. And um, be ready for all the current ones that are upcoming. Mm -hmm. And we got cool classes. Pretty much what we do here, but more like hanging out and answering questions with each other. Little black roots come in the, it's a little bush that's happening here. Mm -hmm. uh, I am just trying to give myself the little knots of branches. I will add some leaves to these. There's that weird little outcropping.
Putting some like little in the mm -hmm. tree it's branches. Kind of See if I can. Little light lines. These will be probably covered with a lot of leaves, but they'll peek out and then we'll put some more in. Oftentimes the layering of all of this really uh, works. Let's call that a step and then come back and give the trunk some personality. And let's start, and then we get the leaves up. Because the, right. the, these three trees are weirdly the subject of our painting. Isn't that cool? That they're the subject? They're what it's about. It's what it's about. And what it's about is what you can do at home. So if you are patient with yourself, if you don't rush through the process, if you do the steps, you will do a much better painting than you could ever expect. If you keep at the process, you keep doing the paintings and you don't rush the steps and you give yourself the time to be on your art journey in a hundred paintings, you're going to be a completely different artist than you are today. I'm a different artist every hundred painting. We're all different artists every hundred paintings. It's just the journey is absolute. <laughs> Really, actually, is quite, quite very absolute. Mm, got my grainer here. I might use my grainer, and um, I will probably use what little hoggy hog do I have? And thank you to all the star senders and supporters out here. We are that much closer to having a disco ball. A disco ball. A disco ball. So I made some sizing for my brushes and it was a mixed bag. <laughs> um, and so I'm going to get a, a brush that I sized myself and see how it's doing. It's a little hard to get the sizing I made out. And, uh, but it seems to be coming out. So maybe this one is a little closer. This is a Raphael Paris Classic. It is a hog bristle. So while these ones are inexpensive, this one is much less cheap. Maybe this one is like an $8 brush off the brush, guys. You'll have to check to see if I'm right. But, you know, 50 cents. <laughs> There's some difference between the two brushes, and I think it's obvious what it is. But, you know, it's all good either way. It's all good either way. I'm going to take a little of my red, and it's mixing into that brown that I have. And I'll go ahead and get some yellow. And I'm going to come here where these two trees are, maybe separate, and kind of begin to highlight or show the highlight on the interior of this this branch. I'm going to turn it to the side just so I can pull the stroke towards me. I might want more red sometimes and less red other times. It's a very weird little area on that trunk. And then as I come down, I might get more into the brown and brown and black. And I'm using rough strokes. And the reason that I'm using rough strokes is that I want there to be a rough texture to the tree. Now the top of this tree I'm going to come in here, and it's okay if it gets a little white into it. And I'm going to come along the top here. And we'll start to talk about the knot. There's a knot going on here. There's another little knot going on here. Put some little highlights. This is the brown and yellow and a little red and sometimes white. I'm starting to think about how that tree is. Mm. And I may switch into my cat's tongue or my um, round just to have a little more control over it. Get my little gray color going. Come here with a little blue gray. I'm 
Let's start painting in the mini colors of the tree. The tree is colorful. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really important to keep in mind when we're painting the trees, that the tree is quite colorful. It's got a little blue-gray in it. It's got green. There are elements of gold. So you're always going to be painting all those hues and values. I'm just dancing around, grabbing different values. I want to build up the areas that are higher in the tree with highlights and push back the areas that are twisted or in shadow with darker colors. So if I'm trying to like, I may come in with more brown, paint a little root out here. And then there's one that coming forward here. And I've, I know that I've got green I'm going to have to pull into. Mm -hmm. And then highlights on that. I'm going to just paint it. I will be glad I did. Already we've got more of a tree. It's a hot mess at first. right? It can take a minute to find your tree. I'm going to take a little of my red and yellow together. Make sure there's some brown in it. I'm going to come in and think about the kind of area around the trunk. And get a little of the brown and black, maybe. Just with my round brush. Little burnt umber, burnt sienna, and thalo uh, blue makes just a terrific black and gray, perfect for trees. Just the perfect, perfect for tree kind of. Now, as you're painting along there, it may be good for you to talk about painting out of a rut and depression because a lot of folks seem to be asking about that. Well, right now, you've got to realize, and this is really important, I talk to 600,000 people in a weird kind of indirect way, right? Because that's how many subscribers I have on my channel, plus what's following the page, and I take messages, and I'm talking to people. And I want you to understand that depression is on the rise at an alarming rate. Anecdotally, I'm telling you this, but I've been reading what the medical experts have to say, and yeah, it is. So it's seriously intense right now. And it's for a lot of reasons, right? We have kind of something fretting us that we're not really sure what it is and messaging everywhere is unclear and we don't know what's going on and what the future holds. And if we're already struggling around issues around depression or anxiety, man, it is John and I both mm -hmm. had to reach out and get some help because it just is hard right now. We got the kids some help because it's hard right now. Um, so yes, art absolutely can help you break a rut. Art can help you get out of it. But I think it's very important that you understand something. Well, art is an amazing partner in the treatment of all kinds of medical conditions. They do not, it doesn't replace a doctor. It doesn't replace sound medical advice, mm -hmm. right? So if you're so sad that you're unable to paint, and I have been so sad I was unable to paint, you want to reach out and tell your personal physician, your mental health care provider, whoever that is, if you don't have one, Back when we didn't have one, I would see a nurse practitioner at an open clinic, right? Because that's what I could afford. Um, you talk to somebody, you tell them. I had to tell somebody that I know exactly what it's like. I'm too sad to paint. And, and get some help with that. And then as you start to feel better, the painting will come back. But if you've gone through tremendous loss, if you're fighting chronic pain, if you're going through something serious, sadness is real. And sometimes it's, there, you have a reason to be sad, but it can become debilitating. Mm -hmm. If it's interfering with your ability to paint and do the things that you normally do to regulate your mental health, definitely. I mean, not to get up on a thing, but that's my advice because that's what I do for myself. That's what I do for my kids and my husband. That's what I do. Again, I don't know you. We're all e unique individuals, and you may have something else that you need. But I can promise you that everything in your house, I've had a house fire once where everything burned down, and then we lost everything in Canada. And I can tell you I know this from experience because I've been there. I had to, I've had to pay this debt. You can lose every object that you own and be okay as long as the people and yourself are uh, alive. So 
that's what's like irreplaceable is yep. you and the people around you. Okay. And if you're having a hard time at all, doesn't mean you're weak. Doesn't mean you're not trying hard enough to be strong. Does not mean that. Okay. Just means that things are really hard right now. It's not you. All right. I don't know if that was the answer. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I think that was a really good answer. Okay. <laughs> But that, that's my honest answer. It's what I do for myself. I'm going to make a little gray back here. So it's kind of cool, but it pulls this, you know, maybe this one a little bit from the background. You know, art does a lot. It really does. Turn off the news. Sure, that helps. Um, do everything you can. Get sleep. Get sunlight. Eat regularly. Drink water. Take a walk. These things all absolutely do help in, in a plan of mental well-being. You know, but if you're doing all that and you're not there, I'm going to come here and, and start to speak about a, maybe a little knot in the tree. See the little highlight I put in with the little gray and white? You know, you want to talk to some highlights and some things in the tree. So it can be hard. Not unusual. And people are going through it. And if you have gone through something, if you've lost a loved one to depression, somebody um, on a post that I did recently said something so smart that I wish I had said it on my post. If you've gone through losing somebody and you are left behind, get some help. Don't try to muscle through that alone. There are tremendous feelings that come with that, and you should not have to face or unpack those alone. I, I honestly believe you shouldn't have to learn art without an art teacher <laughs> I think you should not have to treat medical conditions without a doctor. But I certainly understand being on a budget and having to go to the nurse practitioner. Been there. Had to do that. Adding some red and some stuff here. Just trying to make sure that I've got nice rough, you know, different textures. Get into my yellow ochre kind of color that I had going. Good color. Can add some white into it when I need to. Start putting some like highlights there. They're not the, the brightest highlights that we're going to have by any means, but they're the beginnings of a highlight, right? Let's add a highlight to the tree right here. We are painting trees today. Not symbolic trees. <laughs> we are painting tree trees today. Sometimes I might get into a little of my red. I like that in my bark. Now here, I'm going to come forward and get into my gray. There's a bit of a flat spot on the trunk before it twists down into several uh, knots and twists. And so I want to kind of capture that. I'm going to come here, I do need to come back with some shadows in here, but I just want to get this sort of base area and then maybe even in here. And then let's start getting some highlights on that beautiful trunk. Let's get some highlights on there, okay? You can do this. You can do this. Sorry that I was monologuing. I know we lost some people on it, and I apologize for that. Um, you know, but I do think it's important messaging. I do think it's important messaging. Let's come here. Um, we're adding a little highlight to the front of this, right? We've got a little bit of our yellow and our brown and our orange in here, and we've added some white. We're just micro-mixing some colors in that, right? And you can get some orange in here and add some orange into my bark. All right, maybe here, there's something kind of at a twist coming down. 
And that's kind of got a little crease going on. And then this kind of blends into two roots coming forward. And then right in here, so we have this highlight here. In the crease, interestingly enough, is where I'm seeing some of this highlight. And I might come just take this color that I have into my white. Yeah, we lost some people talking about depression. We lost some people talking about depression. It's hard to talk about. Hard to talk about. Hard to talk about, guys. And I get that. I do. But it's important if you need to. It's important to. All right, we're going to come right here and just kind of, so again, trying to shape this tree out, aren't we? Using these highlights and these lowlights and these little spaces. Even up here where we have this tree like more in kind of shade, I'm going to take the highlight here and kind of pull one branch. Can you see how that one branch comes there? Get a little more of my brown into that strange little mix that I've got there. This is a much darker kind of. There we go. So Valerie says, uh, I, I feel so seen when you talk to us. Thank you, Cinnamon. I'm so glad. I am so glad. I know it's an uncomfortable space, and I really appreciate when you guys are willing to have the conversation because we help each other. Yeah. When we do. Nobody should have to go through stuff alone. It's the whole reason of having a society. And a little bit of a shadow here. Bring some rough shading up here, right? Because there's some rough shading. And this is very dark up here. We really only see it just, gosh, by hints. Hints, right? I could go into my purple and red and get just a hint of color right here. Dark, but it's just a hint. Bring that little shadow around behind. Where these little branches twist. This is a very twisty little trunk. Purple and red are the most amazing colors. Look at that. Look at that go. Little purple and red for shadow. It's just, it's shocking. But what you're really trying to do is we're just trying to shade all the little bumps and areas of the tree that we have. So that we can see it. Okay. And I'm going to come here. I'm going to do an interesting thing. We're going to make a little brush stroke going forward. This is sort of like. Going to be really cool dappled light when we're done. Let's get a little bit of a shadow there. A little bit of a shadow there. Let's give ourselves a deep one kind of coming forward here. You know, you wouldn't think of all the folds of a tree, but the tree has a lot of folds. And we haven't even gotten into the gorgeous green on this tree yet. So trees have a lot of color. Let's make an orange with uh, quite a lot of yellow. Might gray with a little bit of purple. Interesting gray in color, I know, but it'll work. And then if I get into this, I'll just mix right into my white and yellow. And let's add a little bit of light just streaking across there. And a little bit of light popping there. See a little light catching the edge of the. So this is a little light catching the tree. 
I'm going to get a little more white into it right here. Right, because there's these really bright areas that maybe perhaps Getting a little light dappled in on a tree. Dapple some light on your tree. Sprinkle that light up on your tree. Yeah. Forward tree. Really bright in a couple places. I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow and red again to orange. I'm going to get some green in it. Green, green, green. I'm going to rough brush up the trees, some of this moss and mold. Mm, makes sense. Rough brush up the trees, some moss and mold. Has some moss and mold on it. Bark is uh, often rough. <laughs> are you making a joke, or did I think you were making a joke, but you're not making a joke? Well, you, you, you know how you'd know if it was a dad joke? Hmm. It'd be obvious. <laughs> That's true. I don't know about all of you, but I'll, I'll admit this about myself. Sometimes I'm that person that doesn't always get the joke. I'm like, what? I'm that person sometimes that does not get the joke. Sometimes, Let's get some yellow into it. Sometimes there's just no joke to get. Sometimes there's just no joke to get. It's a little bit of highlight, right? Mm-hmm. Into that green. To the green. Sometimes I get a stronger little pop of the uh, thalo green because it's so vibrant and it blends in so well. And back into the yellow. And then this time I'll get a little white. Gonna come in here and talk about these roots a bit. We are getting a tree trunk done, aren't we? It's a tree. Do you feel like you painted a tree? I feel like you might have painted a tree. I'm going to take a little of my cad red and a little of my docks purple and my filbert grainer. And I'm going to take a couple places on my tree and rough it up. The filbert grainer. You don't have to use this brush. This is just a way to do it. Mm-hmm. Just want to rough it up a little. Maybe get some of this light highlight that we've got. 
Put a little more water into it so that it's flowing off the brush. Mm -hmm. Create some rough highlights. The rough moments on a tree. Because you do want little rough moments on a tree. Mm hmm. I do. I get a little of my blue into this, a little more white. The layers of the tree. black where I need it. Yep. And what I like about this brush is that it gives me this really rough experience. And I like that rough experience. I'm pretty happy with that. Like we've really painted that tree. Let's call that a step because we've got two more to do and then leaves. It's a journey. I'm going to need another cup of coffee. Are you? Oh, yeah. All right, the I'll leaves are going to be like the easiest part of this whole thing. But getting the trees in the way you need them to be, that's some work. And getting your focus tree in, because that forward tree, that's your most focused tree. That's the one where you want to put your love and attention and really paint him out, really show him out, because he's beautiful. He's weird, and he's old, and he's lived in the forest a half a minute, and he's just perfect to sit against and contemplate the day. And he's, you know, topical because he's socially distanced. <laughs> so. He's a very likable little tree, isn't he? And you can kind of see his little shape and everything. And to make sure that I can really, really see him as defined, I'm going to make sure that the branch here is, what I'm doing here is just making sure that my, my different little spaces are well-defined. Because sometimes it's hard to do and you need value to get that. So just checking that on that. Now... This little guy here, we have a lot of leaves in front of. We got to paint him, but we don't have to paint him as much as we painted this other tree. Um, so I'm going to just take my round. He's much more gray, so we're going to go into the uh, burnt sienna and uh, ultramarine blue space. He does have, you know, a little bit of shading, and we do see a little bit of it, but not nearly as much as you might think. Not nearly as much as you might think. So I'm going to just deepen him in. And then where we need to get a little white into there, we will. Let's do short little brush strokes that kind of give a rough impression of bark. Got to take those down here. You can show a little of the root going off with a bit of a highlight. And then even here, it's, it's sort of interesting because this, this tree is a little different. It's actually behind the other one. Let's get a little more highlight here. Just a little bit of a rough tree. See how that little rough tree is starting to happen there? We just want them to happen. Little short brush strokes. So a little shadow there pulling this little tree out. And a little brown. Yeah, it's too much white in there. But we're going to need a little burnt umber and thalo blue green. Kind of create a deep forest little green area. You know, and then as you need 
a little highlight on that, you can highlight some of that. Maybe a little highlight right there where the moss is going up the tree a bit, just a bit. We have a little moss. Just a little bit in the forest. He's got, he's got a little moss. He's, he's, a, he's a little mossy. Little of our burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, and then there are highlights of that there. So we're just getting the grays and the different colors that are there. Can highlight one more level. That's pretty nice. Now I might want to be in my taupey colors. Oh, thank you, babe. In my taupey taupey color with my, uh, and I'm gonna come here in the center of the tree and sort of taupe him up because these are all in similar senses. These are all, oh, that's too much yellow. I'll just go with it. Sometimes if I get a color in an unexpected place, I just go, you know what? We're going with that. That's happening now. And to that end, I'm going to start to speak to this tree. This tree has a lot of the yellow and red to it. So I'm going to come here and say, all right. There's a very interesting shaping and shading to you that I'm completely willing to play with. And then it's sort of burnt or brown at the base. It's, it's really fascinating as if the, as if there had been a fire or something. Yeah, so we're going to be playing with that, I think, quite a lot. Maybe a lot of yellow in some of this. Get a little brown in there. Ooh, that's good. We can easily come back with black, you know, and tint and tone this. But I definitely want to start to up here with a little value of that brown. So these little branches are coming out from behind this one and there's a couple things we're going to do to showcase that. I just want to make sure that I'm getting, you know, a little black and brown here on my brush. Come here and I'm going to begin the thought of a knot. And then I'm going to begin the thought of a twist. Kind of bringing that black up there. And you know, I've got this gray that I've worked pretty, pretty hard for, so I can work the gray into this. Ooh, that's pretty. The orange and the gray really work together. So we're keeping the tree trunk sort of burnt looking at the base. And I'm going to come up here. There's a little bit of that kind of blue burnt space here. Maybe a little bit coming up here into this strange little branch. Roll my little brush out. And it's okay if I get more black into what's going on. Don't mind that. Back into my blue gray. And then there's a bit of a highlight on that root right there. So we're trying to highlight the roots to give them shape, right? We're giving them a little highlighted shape. Lots of color on the tree trunks, highlighted shape. We are paint. Yeah. I'm, 
John's, John's like, are you okay? I'm making coffee. I'm like, I'm okay now. I just heard coffee. I'm adding a little white to uh, my little gold and red mixture here. And I might get a little more yellow into it till I find what I'm looking for. Adding a little twist to that tree, a little more yellow into that twist. A little more yellow into this twist. Maybe right there at that bend. Bring some little brush strokes down, kind of implying twists into the bark. So now the tree is starting to twist and be weird, which we want. We do really want that. Get into my orange up here. And little values kind of shading them all together. I'm on the toe of my brush. I'm letting a lot of the canvas show through so that the painterliness of it all kind of gets me by. I'm liking that quite a lot. He's pretty, isn't he? Isn't he gorgeous? Let's keep going with a little bit of our black on the toe of our brush. Shade here, kind of pull these branches out from each other. Maybe a little more blue. That's the ultramarine blue. We're stroking that up from the base. Again, we're just playing the, the rusticness of this tree. We haven't even put any leaves on it. It's already a beautiful creature. I mean, you've seen this when you were walking. You know you have. You've seen this tree. And while I'm here, I can start to come here and talk about this little tree. He's a little further off from all these guys. I'm going to get my little gray. But far off or not, you know, he still wants the same things that his little tree friends across the way want. He wants sunlight. He wants nourishment. He's trying to ca capture some some light in the world. He's darker. He is darker. Get some purple in there. That's always surprising when we go and get some purple, right? That's always the surprise. But it's one of those colors, like when you get it worked into something, man, it's nice. I don't have to worry too much about a lot of this because a lot of this has, you are my hero. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting close, guys. We're almost to the downhill. I'm going to get a little yellow on my brush. And because I've got purple, the yellow and purple it will gray out in the most interesting way. And I can uh, get a little highlight going here. Just playing a little bit with that. Get down into the blue. A lot of times, what I don't even worry about rinsing the brush. And the reason I don't worry about rinsing the brush is I want a grayed out color. See how we're adding a little highlight so we can see the roots coming down in this tree. We know we've got a lot of branches and things that we're going to put up here, and that's going to be fine. But this way, we've got a little bit of root coming. Oh, hi, Twix. In this tree. I can also add a little white here to sort of, uh, let's be dramatic, right? A little white here to a couple of places. What we often forget to do is shade things like tree branches. We get into the, so caught up in the, I'm going to draw a trunk and I'm going to draw a branch. And especially if you're coming from that painting party space, which is awesome. I like painting parties because it gets you into art. But one of the things you want to do when you're moving out of the one hoots into the three hoots is you want to kind of get into your trees where they have a little shadow, have a little shading. You know, that's what, you're, that's what the goal is. Even if you're not here today, know that you will be. 
you go check my profile on Facebook, Cinnamon Cooney, and you're going to see my uh, banner is a portrait done of me by Alicia Hu. And Alicia Hu, was, she started painting not very long ago. She started where you are. And she'll show you. She's like amazing. She'll be like, yeah, this is where I started. You have to know that you can get there. You just got to believe in yourself and do the work. That's all it is, really. I feel like I want just one more level of something. So I'm going to come in here and maybe, yeah, just one more level lighter, I think. I like that. Sometimes I like just to hit one more little level lighter. Just, uh, it works for me. Just one more highlight. Coming in off of the tree, maybe it's, it's much lighter because the, the branches are up in the light and You want at least three values, lights to darks, on your painting, but sometimes you'll want more. Now I'm going to come in here and maybe, uh, while I'm waiting on add some personality to my fence. There's no reason that my fence needs to have less personality than other parts of my painting, right? All right, I think we're good, and he's back, and we're ready to go on to the next step. So now everything from here on out is really building out the canopy of the trees, and the um, drama in the forest floor, right? We've got some background trees to do. We've got some different things to get going. And so now it's time to do a step. We don't want to go from here to just some forward facing leaves. We do want to take that intermediary step where we do some trees and twigs and things in the distant for mid ground forest and then pull branches and leaves as we come forward. Really think about the forest floor, the pops of green that might be there. Um, the different little stuff that's happening on the forest path. You don't want to miss those, uh, those things. You really want to get them. You want to. Even if you don't know you want to, you want to. All right, I'm going to take, I'm going to change my water. This water is filthy. I'm going to change my water to a clean water, and I'm going to use my precision number two. Uh, this is a precision brush by Raphael, and it's the number two. 8910 is the one. It's really almost a rigger, just a very long round. If you don't have this, just use my number four round or whatever good rounds you have. I'm going to get a little of my blue and some of my brown to create our distant gray that we use on our trees again. What's so funny? The light in the studio. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know what, guys? Give me a second. I want to do something in the background here. I do. Yeah. The lights in the studio yes. have created a pattern on all the reflection of the paint that makes them look like there's little smiles. <laughs> well, wonderful. There's little smiles on all the little paint reflections, the orange, the green, the blue, the yellow blob. They all have these little smiles. Oh, that's nice. You mean here or here? Uh, on, the, on the paint blobs. So. Oh, they do. <gasps> See, they do. The light reflection has created little smiles. They do. It's My because paint is this. happy. It's because his the eyes and the, the, the art angels have come and blessed the studio. My paint is happy. <laughs> paint. That's that's how you know that the good energy is with you. Happy. That's paint. how you know. I'm gonna come up here and get this light orange that I had mixed earlier, and I might kind of pinch my bristles together. I just want to dapple some light. Before I put in these little trees here, there's some very distinctive dappled little light. You get a little more yellow. Notice I'm pinching the cheap brush. Mm -hmm. Pinch it, pinch it. It's okay. We just want to make sure that we've got a little bit of that because if we don't, we won't like it. Just a little bit of dappling. Here. A little bit of distant bush there. And if ever I, you know, I want to, I can come in with a little of my purple. Make sure your brush isn't too wet. My brush is feeling a little too wet to me. My red and purple.
kind of give that a little shadow at the base. Let's dry this and then get our little... Okay. So thank you guys for all the star support over here on Facebook. I was just trying to fathom the amount of stars over here. It is... It is... I do not how you say unfathomable the number of stars there are you there are do more we have stars, so many stars more stars than are visible in the with in the sky with Thank the naked you eye for the stars I'm so appreciative I'm very excited John's John's been eyeing that disco ball for a There's, minute and we have this hierarchy of things so everything that you do in super chatter patronage or any of our ads whatever it is that we earn revenue from it all goes back into the studio mm -hmm. like seriously our cars are all over 10 years uh, uh, I, yes, that's true. We have um, <laughs> 2007, 2007, 2004, and a 1989 Suzuki Sidekick that's been yeah. fully restored. Doesn't make us me. sad. We like that age oh, no. of car. I would not get but rid of it. That's just not what we do with our capital is invest. You guys invest in us. We invest back in you is what I'm trying to say to you. You couldn't pry my FJ out of my cold, dead hands. People have tried to offer me way more money than it's worth, and I will not sell it. Seriously. He won't. I have and that's been okay. And okay. I want we it. don't feel sad about it. I'm just letting you know no. that what we do with uh, your wonderful donations, your patronage, it's not is we Ferraris. invest back in you. It's yeah. it, we're not buying Ferraris. We're as not, much as I would want. We're not one. those online people. Actually, I don't want a Ferrari. They're too high maintenance. You're not paying for my travel lifestyle. <laughs> I would like right. to ride in a Ferrari. If you have a Ferrari and you'd like to take me for a ride, I'd go. You know a bunch of our community has Ferraris. But they don't so I'm like just making these distant. These are sort of these mid-ground trees. We can see them a little more. Um, we don't get too attached to them because a lot of them are covered out by leaves that are coming forward. But this is that next layer of tree. And I really need this to fluid out more. You know, I'm not exclusively a Ferrari guy. I'm also okay with like Lamborghinis and Lancia, specifically the Stratos. Very fond of them. Renault R5 Turbo. Fun. You know, I like rally cars. We're just making sure that there's nice trees right around here. So what is this painting called? I don't know. The patrons name the painting. Right now it's called Misty Autumn Forest. Yeah, I, that's why the patrons name the painting. <laughs> because we give them wonderfully like searchable names. Like Do you want to paint a Misty Awesome Autumn Forest? That's this what is this not is. painting. But uh, the patrons, that's one of the things the patrons get to do is we put up each painting after the show and they name it. And if their name gets chosen, uh, they get a little byline in the mini book that comes out. I'm adding a little highlight to all these little trees. Lisa says Corvettes. Yes, Corvettes are good. Corvettes are probably very good. I know uh, Trish, uh, we met, saw Trish's car. Some of our Sherpas have some very interesting cars. Like they have really nice cars. Oh, uh, is Trish the one who drives the, mm -hmm. uh, the C30? The Volvo C30? No, she drives oh, she the Oh, she drives the pickup truck. The big truck. Yeah. Yeah. Big truck. And it is awesome. Speaking of Corvettes, my heart almost stopped when I walked into Mike's shop. And there in the back was mm -hmm. a red 1963 split window Stingray Corvette. Okay. 427, original, all there. I just sort of. You know, like lost your mind for it. I just sat in it and looked out the rear window through the rearview mirror. I took a picture of the rearview mirror looking out the back window. It's that cool. It's hard to explain how cool that car is. Sometimes I'll add some just like some light lines here that could be distant trees. We're just speaking to the far away stuff. So see now that our mid, you know, forest has a thing. And then I'm going to come here. Get my dark color again. That's my burnt sienna and my all-terrain blue. Best tree gray ever. Best tree. 
Best tree gray ever. And we're going to make sure that in front of our fence, there's a tree. And it has, you know, tree-like properties. And then we're going to highlight it as well, even though we know lots of leaves are going here. So then the fence is a little bit anchored into the painting, right? Mm -hmm. And that's an important thing. You want to anchor the fence into the painting. Little branches. Now everything can have a minute here and think about what it's done. And we're going to come in and I'm going to use my um, crazy brush again. I'm going to get into my bright yellow and I'm going to come in and make sure that I've got nice dappling. on my path. Oops. And I want to make sure that I've got nice leaves all around this stuff. So I'm going to get my red and a little of my docks purple, but a lot my cad red. And we're going to plant some little, we're going to make some leaves that are dappled all on the ground, right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes we're going to get some yellow into that. Little marks, little random marks. You're just trying to make sure that your forest floor has the, the look of something that is, you know, had leaves falling on it. Should be very dirty, the forest floor. You can always come back and add a little more purple if you need um, some more shadow into what you've got. And you want to just take a minute and look at it. You don't, what you're trying to avoid, what you don't want to get, is um, regular repeated patterns. Right. You want to make sure that um, you're not making regular repeated patterns. I'm going to grab my number four, bring some of my yellow over here and some of my red, make it bright orange, no purple or anything in it, just quite bright. Adding a little highlight there, kind of highlighting the path. Get into my red and purple again. And just use this to make sure that there's just not a 
pattern to what we've got going on. We want it to feel random. If I've got to kind of glaze over anything, I will. And I would say that is this layer. We're going to come back and start adding some leaves. This forest is going to start being a forest so fast. All it's right. going to blow your mind. This is pretty forest. It's pretty. Painting is fun and pretty. And it is fun and pretty, isn't it? Mm, be sure and sip your relaxing beverage, whatever that is, whatever's good for you. I like coffee and I like tea. And sometimes I get other healthier beverages, but mostly I'm powered by coffee and tea. Okay. So we has a lot going on. So many leaves, so many things are happening. Definitely like this really crazy, terrible brush for them. <laughs> hmm? All right. So I'm going to come in at first with my purple and red. That gives me such a nice deep red. It really does. My trick here is I do want shadows. I don't want to paint out everything, but I need to paint enough stuff so that it feels like the forest is full. My red and purple, this is my deepest of the of the reds that I'll be working with. You could, if you felt like it, paint out each individual leaf. Mm -hmm. That is allowed. I don't feel like it. At all. And when I want to shape it, I pinch. I'll make sure that I've got some coming out into the path because that's interesting, isn't it? The interesting it path is interesting. Is filled over. And so you don't want to not include those little leaves coming into the path. Right. A little yellow can come into here. And I'm going to make an orange, but it's going to be like maybe. This tree's a little orange that's going on. And. I can always shape again. And shaping sometimes is very helpful because it'll help you get those. kind of branch shape shadows going. Kind of coming along here. So we're just building up these little clusters. These are the deep values of the very bright orange leaves, right? So sometimes you need to get a little more water on there. Sometimes I'll get a little purple into it. Maybe a little more red this time. It's on the top of that. Oh, it's looking good. It's good to kind of have some of them going up in. I'm going to rinse out pretty thoroughly.
And we're going to definitely sort of fill this area in. Oh, Twix? Oh, uh, the, 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 are we calling it that? I don't know. Everyone says, what's that Dorothy dog? <laughs> oh, do, do you mean the Yorkshire Terrier? Yeah. Cause, cause Dorothy's dog wasn't a Yorkshire Terrier. It was a, it was a, it was a Terrier. No, this is a Yorkie. Dorothy had a, those of you that are dog breed knowers, Dorothy's dog was not a Yorkie. What was it? It was a different, it wasn't a Westie, but it was some sort of Terrier. Like a Norwich or something was it? Wasn't it a Norwich Terrier? Why do I know this? Because I watched the Westminster Dog Kennel Show. That's why I know this. I figured it was just like, hey, you got a dog? Mm -mm. Give it to that girl. No, man, that was a big decision. I'm going to take a little of my uh, cad yellow and cad red together. And I'm going to make a mid-range orange, which will be quite a lot brighter than what we've had out here so far. And I'm going to highlight some of our leaves a bit. There we go. Right into the sunlight, right? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit sparkling. here. And then I'll go even one more. <gasps> one more. Just because it's really in the sunlight. It really is. So if it's really, really in the sunlight, I might get a little more involved into it. I'm going to get some more clean yellow. The orange that is there in this space is much lighter. Huh. Well, Leave some of your branches showing through. What's up? It would seem that some other people have been buying disco balls since we've been talking about this. Oh, other people got some disco balls too? They were like, I want a disco ball in my art studio. I don't know, because when I started all this... I, and I've been watching disco balls for days because I've been really like on the edge. Like I want to order. He a disco just keeps ball. going. Can we afford to get a disco ball? And I'm like I don't know. I keep the, but so then I was today. Do we I was need like, a disco ball? We there were seven. Now there were seven <laughs> twenty inch disco balls available at the beginning of the stream. There's now only one left in stock. Oh my gosh! Did you get it? I already got one. Oh thank goodness! I knew better. Thank goodness! I knew better. You knew. I knew. You're like you knew. This is a bit clumpier in my load. Oh, I don't like that yellow right there. I just want that little part of it to be a little fuller. Just a little bit there on the, the path, right? Mm-hmm. Just a little bit on the path. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We've got some nice stuff afoot here, yeah? Mm hmm We've got some shapes, there's some layering, there's some stuff. Now I'm going to start, and I'm going to be really dramatic here. I'm going to get just a little yellow into my... almost pure cad red. A branch across there. Mm -hmm. I 
Oops, I was over there looking at the. You and got then the branch over right here. Right across this tree. I'm sorry. I was I was watching elsewhere, guys. It's okay. Little. Sorry about that. So these are like little branches that have leaves. Which brush was that? I'm still using this Art Mines. Hmm. They're cheap. So again, I got some really negative feedback that I was pushing like expensive brushes, and I'm always telling you guys you can get cheap brushes. And then there was also the stuff because the Cambridge got discontinued, which is a fantastic hog brush. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to go find who made it and make it myself. But um, I just want you to understand that it's the technique, the magic, it's your understanding of the skills that makes something work. Yes, brushes will make it easier. I could do this in two seconds with a mop or my dome or my fans, all those being true. I think this brush is like 50 cents. <laughs> sure. It's a little bit across there. Maybe almost even pure cad red. Look at that. Wow. That's pretty, pretty strong, pretty. Okay. That's a very important little branch kind of coming out and going back, doing a thing. Mm-hmm. Coming and layering over there. Kind of coming and layering there. Now, I'm going to come in and get a bunch of yellow. On top of these red branches. Mm Mm-hmm. Doing pretty good. We're getting some glow on top of them. That's what we're doing. Mm, I want a uh, orange, but I don't want it quite as bright as the front yellow. So I'm going to bring this back here. Mm-hmm. Similar thing, just not quite as bright as the front. Same. And maybe a few less highlights on it. Now, a lot of yellow and a smidge of white. Just a little bit there at the edge of that branch. Or maybe it caught some sunlight, right, guys? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of sunlight on some of these. Not everywhere, just on some. Because some leaves always catch a little more light than others, right? Mm-hmm. 
Wow, that's really coming together, looking nice. It's looking beautiful, right? We're almost there. We're going to make sure all our brushes are rinsed out. Now, our long brush, our good point, whatever your good point of detail round, my number four, this particular brush here, doesn't really matter. You just need one you can count on. These are the branches that are up high in the canopy. Now a couple places where you have it maybe all the way through, you want to come back into your reds, mm -hmm. your oranges. Add a little layer. Yeah. Ah. Make sure you break them up. If they got too full of themselves, you know, that is. Or they show, but they don't show. Turning out so nice. I am not unhappy with it. You know, just want to make sure that all of that feels like, you know, Mm -hmm. It's there. And then there's this sort of interesting little bit. We're going to take a little of our brown and green. And my long brush. And loosely paint out the beginnings of your green shapes. Green and orange, right? They're, you know, sit at opposite ends of the color wheel. And so when you play them against each other or you play mm -hmm. orange and blue against each other, you're going to get a dramatic and I like to make sure that it's kind of randomly put around. And so when I do get my yellow into it, it's 
so cool. Just planting a few little greeneries. They're just loose little greeneries that you see. And they catch a little bit of light, don't they? Yeah. Playful. We don't need to be that specific. We're just saying that there's a little bit of green there and we'll catch that story. Ah. All right. We take a look at it. I think we really got there, guys. I think we painted a fall forest. That's looking really amazing. Quite a landscape in a sitting. <sighs> I'm really impressed. I'm going to go ahead and put a signature on it. I'm going to take a detail brush. Come over here. Like a little... I don't know what color I want to sign in. I think pretty hard about the colors I sign in because the si signature affects the composition. Mm -hmm. I don't want to sign in a way that just destroys the piece. But you do want to be able to see a signature. So that's always the balance, isn't it? There you are. There's something on there at least. So we sort of know who did it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that turned out awesome. Well, thank you, John. It was definitely a forest in fall, right? We painted it. Painted it, painted it. So the brushes, if you're wondering, um, these are the uh, DIY Home Art Mines. I've got these in the crafting section. The issue with these is that they shed, so you've got to really pre-shed them out by washing them. And getting them ready and be constantly pulling them out like this. You need a towel to the side to rinse them off. I mean, this is definitely, it's, you know, it's a similar hog. Look at the shape of that, right? So, you know, if you want something that's a better hog that's like that, then that's what you're going to do. If you want something that's a tidy hog, you know, you're going to want to get like a Cambridge or a Silverstone or something like that. So, you know, um, lots of options out there. Lots of things you can do. Are there any questions? Oh, we have to announce the winners. Oh, that's right. Let me get it pulled over here. Right. Some, some of you guys well, you are winners. You get them. a signed print. Yeah, but is that's Oh, there the, they are. Okay, okay. I see them. So you can put them up. and Because uh, actually, I know two of the people that one. I was like a pleasant surprise because usually... The random common picker. Oh, do you want me to put those up as graphics? Yeah, that's why I gave them your graphics. Oh, I didn't understand that. So I they was... could see, like, genuinely, I used the random okay. common picker, and this is what it picked. Okay, well, hold on a second. Let me get I'm a order. contester. I used to do giveaways and entries all the time until I realized how much spam it was going to create in my life. But I am that person, and I love those things. And so out of the integrity of that, man, the random common picker does what it does. On the entry for the bird hop, if you did the... Uh, bird hop or bird hop hashtag. I let it go. If you had a typo in there, I wasn't going to rule anybody out. You didn't have to have a dad joke, but dad jokes were appreciated. We're going to actually do something with all those dad jokes later, I think. Uh, the next bird hop will be September 11th, Saturday. And we're going to make some changes to the bird hop. It's going to have little breaks between the videos. So it'll go for 50 minutes. Each lesson will start on the hour, and that will give you 10 minute breaks between paintings to walk a dog or get a bite or do something. I, I campaigned for 15, but 
Um, mom, mom was like, they just need 10. But, you know, she does those weird marathons where she paints for eight hours all day. So I'm not sure she has a perspective on that. But anyways, mm -hmm. that was the negotiation. It was 10 minutes. You got a 10-minute break. These six lessons are available to you. You hop through on time. So it goes, me, mom, me, mom, me, mom. I think next time it'll start. Who's mom? Ginger Cook. Who's Who's that? Ginger Cook Live is my mom. She's your mommy. She has a YouTube channel. Did we do 300 or we're we, just celebrating? We, we're celebrating. We've done 300. Oh, we oh did we get buy a disco ball? Oh, yeah. We get did, to buy a disco ball. And we, look, we, there's our first one. Well, actually, that was our second one. Our second one. That's our second one. Oh, second but one. that's I just, okay. I didn't know. They pulled them up in random order for me. Okay. <laughs> that's fine. Um, I just needed them in order because it told me who won what, but I haven't okay. memorized. So super lucky for you. Oh, okay. So uh, the first winner we're announcing is Rahil. You won the Red Cardinal. So you are the winner of the Red Cardinal. And you will be getting a signed print with certificate from me. I'm so excited to be sending it to you. Rahil has been painting with us mm -hmm. for years and enters everything and has not been lucky before and is always up at some crazy hour to watch with us. Um, has started, Rahil started his own YouTube channel at this point and is totally, I think, secretly away from the family doing art. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if it's like I'm I'm in school and I'm I'm in university, but I'm also doing art. Nobody has noticed. So, you know, I totally get that completely. Anyways, you won and congratulations on you won the Red Cardinal signed print. All right. Next. Ah, Rebecca Clowers, you won the American Goldfinch. You won the Goldfinch. So you will be receiving a signed print of the Goldfinch. Um, and I'm so excited to be sending this to you. I, was, I always love it when, you know, there are people like I'm familiar with. And she did a great dad joke, which you can see there. I, I, I did the things you could see like I genuinely like just picked it and just went with it. Which I was, you know, it's great. I do. And my mom's giving giveaways on hers too. If you entered, you still have a little time, I think, to enter for her giveaway of her birds over on her channel, Ginger Cook Live. I'm doing mine, mine today. You ready? The show again at the end. You ready for the next one? Mm-hmm. All right, Kelly Davis. By the way, you have these backwards for me, so I'm having to read them backwards. Oh, good. Kelly Davis, which I guess is forwards for you guys? Yes. Okay, so Kelly Davis is the winner of the Hummingbird. So you'll be receiving, uh, and it's a white belly, it's a specialty Hummingbird. Um, all of the paintings were, the originals were auctioned off, so they all have owners now. Mm -hmm. Patty Hoffman came hard, but she got outbid like at the last minute on the hummingbird. <laughs> um, and so uh, all six paintings on the hop were uh, put up for auction starting at a dollar. The originals that were done in the show. Um, those are all now uh, homed. They've had their winning bids and everything. On top of that, put it back, put it back, put it back. I'm saying things. On top of that, right now for my <laughs> website, if you didn't win a print and you want a print from either Ginger or me, you can buy each one individually alone, whichever one is your favorite, signed. It's a sign and number print. Or you can buy the whole collection of six and frame them. They are printed 8x8 eight eight on 9x12, 300 pound GSM paper. Printed is the wrong word. It's um, pressed. Pressed. We use a digital press. Digital press. Sorry. So it's a laser technology, very similar to Je like. Play. Uh, it's a little uses inkjet. This is actually a higher quality. It actually pushes, it, it melts the, the, the surface like a toner. It's mm -hmm. very similar to like that. So it's a laser. Closer to an iris. Yeah, it's a laser technology. So this is like the zhuzh zhuzh thing now in prints and editions. These editions are limited. We're closing the print edition down on the 20th, which means what has sold is what is printed, and that is the close of the edition. Mm-hmm. So it could be a very small edition. It could be a very large edition. Um, they will be certified. They will be hand signed. My mom's will hand, my mom's, my mom's. Yeah, my mom's. My mom will hand sign hers. I'm hand signing mine. Um, and you get your certificate. I think it's really awesome. I'm super excited about it. You can, you can buy an individual one if you're like, oh, I just like the goldfinch. You can just do the goldfinch. But if you want to buy all six, you can do all six. Congratulations to the people who won. And if you want to do the lessons, they're available. Uh, none of them are more than 45 minutes, except for, I think when I went over two minutes once because somebody lied to me about the time. <laughs> and But they're short one hoot lessons and we're doing them again. Uh, fall birds. Bella asks, how much for one bird? 
I think a signed print is, I don't remember. 30 earthling doolars. 30 earthling doolars. Now, if you want to buy three paintings of like all three of cinnamons or all three of gingers, they don't come mix and match, but they sell three ginger, three cinnamon. Either set of three is 75 doolars. All signed and numbered. And then if you want to buy the set of six? All six is 125 doolars. So it's a very reasonable addition. We kind of, we didn't want to like, you know, even we didn't want to break the bank because we knew not nope. everybody could bid on the addition. And all of this supports the artists and their and their work and doing this stuff. Yeah, this is how we're able to do this. So. Congratulations to the auction winners. Um, I think that's really exciting to everybody that won a bird in the auction. And congratulations to those of you that won a print, a signed print. Yeah. Um, oh, my gosh, guys. Okay, we can go back to the fall thing. So that was just sort of interesting, I think, to me. This is the painting. Hopefully you got to do this with me today. And this was the painting you hoped to get to do. <laughs> I hope. It's what I was enjoying. So this is what John was enjoying. It's a, certainly a fall path that we all would love to walk down. I know I'm hitting you guys with fall early, but just mental health wise, I need to paint happy, festive things right now. And I will do some more summer stuff like the hydrangeas in front of the ocean is very summery. Um, and those are going to be one hoot. That's going to be under an hour that class. Beginner friendly, simple, simple on a 16 by 20. So not not such an involved big boy here. But again. Everything's broken down. Traceable's available on the website. And, you know, you can take your time. Remember, pause and rewind. Very good tool. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And thank you for helping us get a disco ball. Bye-bye.